Hello and welcome to Analog Insights. Today's episode is about how I inherited an 85-year-old Leica camera, how my friend Jules set out to repair and restore it, where exactly the camera came from, and how we eventually took it out for a couple of test rolls. I hope you enjoy it. I recently visited my aunts for a weekend and arrived on a heavily overcast day. Um, I already expected a quiet mini vacation full of long walks, great food and games of Scrabble. My aunt picked me up from the train station and while driving then casually mentioned that yeah, the weather was not so great uh, this weekend, so let's see what we can do. But I did bring something that will um, certainly take up some of your time and attention. And then she mentioned that she brought a bag of cameras that her husband wants to get rid of and that he was about to pass on to a local camera store when my cousin, so his daughter, interfered and um, basically said, oh, hey, um, Max might want to take a look at these. Um, maybe you give him a chance to do so. So she brought a bag of cameras and of course I was really excited to see them. After breakfast, I finally got a chance to unwrap the package and see what was in there. And it turned out that he, uh, she brought two 16 millimeter aqua film cameras, so motion picture cameras, and believe it or not, a Leica 3A. The camera came with all sorts of accessories and uh, two um, lenses, a 50 millimeter Sumar F2 lens and a 28 millimeter F2. 6.3 hector lens. Naturally, I was really, really excited. I took the camera back to Munich and sat down with Jules for an initial assessment. And I'd also sent Greg a couple of images of the camera because he owns an Oscar Barnack Leica, like a 3F as well. And the initial assessment showed, okay, the shutter appears to be working. The camera is definitely in need of a cleaning. Some of the dials were a little bit stiff, um, but so far it looked pretty okay. The 50 millimeter lens, on the other hand, looked quite uh, hazy and there were even some weird paint pieces in it. Um, the camera was definitely from 1935 based on the letter that my um, uncle had provided and the serial number of the camera. But nevertheless, um, it featured the manual of a Leica 3F and a top plate that exactly fits the 3F. So our first guess here was that the camera had been updated in the 1950s from a Leica 3A to 3F to incorporate new features. Um, a first test roll then showed the true age of this camera. Um, beyond its cosmetic condition, um, there was a lot going on inside the camera. So as you can see here on the negative, the shutter curtain was often visible in the frame. The film didn't move straight through the back of the camera. The shutter speeds were inconsistent and sometimes really incorrect. And the rangefinder was completely off, so it was really hard to focus the camera correctly. The first film beautifully illustrates everything that was wrong with the camera. So the camera needed to be cleaned and repaired. The first option was to send the camera off to the official Leica service in Wetzlar. Unfortunately, I was a little bit hesitant because I had had some bad experience or let's say suboptimal experience with the service of my former Leica M3. And I also knew that it would be quite expensive. Furthermore, my um, uncle had sent the camera to get a service assessment twice in over the years, once in 1988 and once in 1994, and in the latter case, even to the official Leica service in Wetzlar. 
And even the Deutsche Mark uh, prices from back then m made me feel a little bit dizzy and I could instantly see that I could easily invest a small fortune in the repair of this camera. So I cautiously asked Jules whether he would be willing to give it a try and repair it. And Jules being Jules, he immediately jumped at the opportunity and said, yes, of course, despite the fact that he had never repaired a Leica camera before, only a couple of other um, film cameras and of course also opened some of the len some lenses and repaired these. So he, he had some experience, but never in the Leica realm. So Jules set out to repair it and he completely disassembled the camera, carefully laying out each of the pieces in order to remember how to put it back together. He used watchmaker tools um, and like that was able to work on the small screws and springs. The entire interior was cleaned with isopropanol and Jules removed the old leather on the outside of the camera as it literally fell apart once the camera was opened. So just waited for this to happen basically. The film transport area needed um, a complete overhaul as the old paint um, scratched into the film when it was being transported, which we could also see on the negative before. And the rangefinder was adjusted and then um, it all worked fine again. And the tension of the shutter curtain, even that needed to be uh, corrected again. And while doing all this, Jules also noticed that the camera had been opened a little bit roughly before, probably for one of the service assessments that my uncle requested. Um, Jules replaced a few screws at the end, so one of them even taking coming from an old Compur shutter and recreated one spring that had become a little bit loose over the years. And um, um, he also recreated the leather casing around the camera, um, precisely cutting it to, to fit. And only the glass elements in the rangefinder and the 50 millimeter lens um, couldn't be replaced without spare parts. But uh, other than that, uh, this was a complete overhaul of this camera. While Jules repaired the camera, I started researching a bit and asked about the camera's provenance in the family. My great uncle purchased the camera in 1935 and then um, flew Germany during the war. The camera then saw Greece, Hungary and Switzerland and only after the war returned to Germany. Reading about the history and hearing about it and also imagining how many images were taken with this particular camera across the world um, made quite an impression on me, to be honest. I, I appreciated the value of this camera much more um, than already before. And especially growing up in a context like today where every phone or digital camera kind of looks the same and is also replaced after four or five years, it was incredible to see that a, a tool that is 85 years old can actually be restored and used again. And of course, fortunately, in our particular case, the film um, is still available today in the very same way as it was back then. And um, I also learned or could confirm that indeed the camera had been in the 1950s updated from uh, a Leica 3A to the Leica 3F features. And um, since then, the camera, as mentioned, only saw an occasional service assessment, but was never repaired. My uncle initially used it as a second camera next to his Pentax uh, cameras. And um, then it spent most of the years in a cupboard and was occasionally um, maybe used. The shutter was uh, yeah, used a bit to, to keep it um, working mechanically, but that's it. And that, of course, also explains the condition in which it arrived, where it certainly needed some cleaning, but also some mechanical overhaul.
After Jules put the camera back together, it worked perfectly again. As you can see here on the negatives, all frames are exposed fully and correctly. The distance between the individual frames is consistently perfect. All shutter speeds work correctly. The dials can be turned and even the 50mm Somar has been cleaned and received a new layer of anti-reflection coating inside. So we took the camera out on two photo walks shooting both color and um, so color negative film and black and white film. And I think the results speak for themselves. Um, you can only see a little bit that the 50 millimeter was not really optimized for shooting color at the time. For me, the camera is a true joy to use. It is a beautiful, compact, mechanical masterpiece with a beautiful design that just works reliably again, despite its age and the long journey that it has behind it. I paired the camera with a handcrafted leather strap that Mark Rossi from Due North Leather Goods in Canada uh, created for me. To me, um, this is a perfect match and I um, really appreciate the quality and the feel of this leather strap. I had also reached out to the Leica service and, um, and then to the Leica vintage shop in Vienna um, who provided me with a fitting vintage lens cap for the Sumar that had come without one. Like that, the set feels complete and I will always hold it dear to me and probably pass it on to Jules' son at one point. And in case you wonder, of course, I paid Jules for all the materials and also the repair work, but the price turned out significantly lower among friends than it would have um, at the official Leica service. And Jules certainly had quite some fun repairing this camera. And uh, of course, I'm incredibly grateful for the repair of this camera. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this somewhat different and special episode of Analog Insights. If you did, please remember to like this video and maybe even share it with your friends. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. Jules Greg and I really appreciate each and every subscriber coming our way. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon. Bye.